Pressure cooker, corned beef, and cabbage. And uh, take my word, if you ever do it in a pressure cooker, you'll never do it any other way. I, I really believe that. It, it, for a lot of reasons. One, it's way quicker. Two, it's, it's a little easier because you're doing it all in one pot. But three, it produces a better product, if you ask me. And uh, I'm going to show you what I've learned. I've got uh, the times, I think, perfect for the cabbage, the carrots, and the potatoes. And if that, anything's a little tricky, it's that. And uh, I think I've got them pretty close. We're going to be using the Instant Pot Pro Crisp, which is what they refer to as their one pot wonder and it's their latest and greatest and I, I guarantee you I love it and it does a great job but anyhow I'm John Sanders I'm also known as Jelly 007 so let's pressure cook this corned beef and cabbage in uh, Instant Pot's one pot wonder I wanted to show y'all everything while it's still in the package before I open it and there is the Murphy and David uh, corned beef I'm using now I was just saying, this is showing $3.99 a pound at, at Publix, but quite honestly, that was on sale. I don't know what the normal price is, and it doesn't say, but there it is. It's a good-looking uh, brisket, and it's got the, uh, the season pack, and it's got a good-looking fat cap on it. You know, best I can tell with it in this package, so we're going to see how it looks in a minute when I get it open. I'm using these potatoes. I actually got these at, uh, I think I got them at Ingles. It doesn't matter. If it's uh, honey gold baby potatoes, and uh, you'll be able to see them a little better in a minute. Same thing. I'm using uh, gold potatoes and red potatoes. Uh, just a normal size head of cabbage, some carrots, and then I'm going to cook the brisket in beef stock. And uh, I use this type. I like this organic beef because it's going to be in it for an hour and a half. Because that's what we're about to do is put it in there. That's the first thing you have to do is you cook this right here for an hour and a half in uh, that beef stock plus whatever water I need to get it covered. But I'm about to show you every bit of that and I will be right back. Okay, so I was at the store and I remembered to get them because I saw other people had used them. But quite honestly, I've done this before without bay leaves. But I was at the store, so I got them. I'm going to put three of them in there. Now, uh, it's not a big deal if you don't have them. Here is what was in that package. And you can see it's got a good fat cap. I'm not about to cut it off. I, I think it works really well. I've got it turned up where you can see it, but I'm going to cook it this way. Now that that's how I do it. I think, I don't know, I kind of do that on smokers and stuff with brisket. So I'm kind of doing it here. Not sure it makes a hill of beans, but that's what I'm doing. I've already set this in there and I filled my water level to where it just barely covered and I, it was it turned out to be uh, uh here it is i used uh that right there which is 32 ounces and then two more full of water so that would be what 96 ounces of water and well you can see right here that's where i'm at on the line but it doesn't matter you, you just want to cover it in my opinion you don't want it any of it above the water so the spice packet you can see it right there i'm going to cut it open right here and just dump it in that water and uh, I may mix that up just a little bit and then I'm going to set uh, that brisket right down in there and then we'll be really close to uh, getting this started let's see if I can find something to stir that up with this will do it and all I'm going to do is just kind of move that around a little bit probably no good reason but that's what I'm doing I am using the trivet now I, I say use the trivet because I don't like the meat sitting on the bottom of the pan. I just don't. I'd, I'd rather it be uh, suspended a little bit. So there, there it is. And you can see I've got it maybe a half inch under the water. But as long as you cover it, it, it should be good. So now all I got to do is put this lid on. And I'm, I'm going to try and explain some things about this pot and why I like it and why I think well, honestly, I don't even know why Instapot sells any other now. I don't know of anything another one will do, and this one air fries. And it also does what we're going to use in a minute, which is the quick cool feature, because a lot of people don't like to dump all the pressure off of a meat uh, real quick. Well, you can put this quick cool, and it helps it cool down and drop that pin faster, and you kind of get the lid off sooner. What we're going to do is pressure cook, I'm going to take it to an hour and a half, which is right there. It's on high. 
Now, one thing I'll say about this, and I'm not sure you can see everything I'm talking about. When you put this lid on, this new, this new pot, their latest and greatest, it automatically seals. You don't have to worry about that. You can also see it has this diffuser, and I'll just show you right quick. When, when you uh, pop it open, you don't have to put your hand over it and flip it anymore. You just do that right there. Take my word. This is, uh, this is a really... Uh, they've thought a lot of things out on it. Not to mention it has the handles on this pot, which I, I didn't show you. I do on my other video. You can see it. And it's induction friendly, but I'll get off of the pot. I've got a video on it. I'll try and link it. But it's an induction friendly pot. Hey, I love it. I'll get to that. But also, I'll say this. <laughs> Once you set the time, you better do what you got to do because <laughs> it resets. So that's a, a good reminder right there. I got to take it back to an hour and a half and this time I will be hitting start. But the point is you don't have to worry about uh, locking your vent lid. But there we go. We're off and running. Now that is quite a bit of liquid, so it's going to take a little bit for it to come up. And I'll try and time it. So it is, uh, it's going to take a bit. So it's 828. I got a feeling, but we'll see. I'll see y'all back in just a second. All right, there it is. The, the pin is up. It is sealed and we have just started cooking. The timer has came on at 8.49. So 21 minutes. Not bad for 96 ounces of, uh, of, of water or liquid. Now that is cold water right out of my tap. I didn't use anything heated. It's just a cold water straight out of my sink. So see you on an hour and a half. I wanted to show you the potatoes and all out of the bag. One pound and 14 ounces, almost two pounds of potatoes is what I'm using. But I'm really doing this for, say, four people. So, And that's because I'm going to quarter this uh, head of cabbage into four pieces. And we're really close to being done uh, on, the, uh, on that corned beef. And that corned beef, if you noticed, was three pounds, uh, 3.29 pounds. So, and I'm going to weigh those carrots for you. And I'll, hang on just a second and I'll do that. Okay, may, it may be a little overkill, but just, just so you'll know, one pound and 4.6 ounces of carrots is what, is what we're going to be cooking. You'll see exactly how that looks in just a minute, and you'll know exactly what the weights were. So I'll be back. And there it is, the end of the hour and a half, and here is the quick cool device. I've got a video on it that I'll link here. But I set it in my, or it stays in my freezer full of water and ready to go at all times. But here's how you do it. And all it's about is cooling this down faster, especially with meats. A lot of people don't want to, you know, do a quick release. And this helps you get the pin down where you don't have to dump all the, the pressure off at one time. But here's what it's about. You remove this and uh, you set this there. And it helps cool it off right quick. So, <laughs> but anyhow, all you do is set it right there and it will very rapidly <laughs> melt and sit down and help cool that pot off a little faster. In fact, we'll see how long it takes. It's 1021. I'll be back when uh, the pin drops. Okay, so while we're waiting on the pin to drop and on our uh, with our quick cool device, I wanted to cut this cabbage up into quarters and show you how I do it now. And a lot of people are doing this, and it, it is a real good idea. And it's pretty much this right here. You just cut the cabbage in quarters, and you don't remove the core. A lot of people, have, for years, even myself, they, they'll take the core out. Well, when you do, it, it wants to fall apart. So the best thing to do is to just leave it intact. And like I said, I'm doing this for four people. So... You uh, you just do it like that right there, and you leave these in. You leave these intact, and it holds it together a little better. So you can once they're cooked, you can get them out of there. Then if you want to cut the core out, of course, as you know, as someone is eating, as someone's eating it or whatever, then they can cut this core out. But it stays together better, and that's the point. So waiting on that pin to drop, and uh, be back. Okay, so I want to say we're at 24 minutes, and all the ice has melted in here, and the water's fairly warm, so I don't think it's doing anything anymore. So the pin hasn't dropped. I mean, I'm sure it helps. Well, in fact, I've got a comparison video. I'm 
pretty sure somewhere, that I'll put up and you can see uh, what it did with and without. But we're going to release this pressure and I can kind of show you right here. As a matter of fact, well, I'm going to pick the camera up. You can see how this device works. It does, well, there was very, well, it was probably, the pin would have dropped in just a minute. There's almost no pressure there. But that's how it works. You don't have to put your hand on that uh, knob anymore, like you've heard, and uh, <clears throat> the way it used to be. I didn't like it either. Now you just flip that lever, and it has the diffuser, and uh, if it had a lot of steam in it, it helps disperse that steam coming out. So hopefully that pin's fixing to drop, and there it went. So what we're about to do is open this up and see what we have. And our uh, uh, corned beef brisket is floating. So I'm going to use these gloves. I may have to move the camera. And I'm going to pull out that, uh, that rack, the trivet. We're going to set it on here. And then I'm going to start getting the vegetables ready. So I might ought to think this out just a little bit. In fact, I'm going to move this. Put that right there, and it looks good. And there come the bay leaves with it, which I need to get out of there anyhow. And as you can see, I mean, it shrinks. They always do, but it was 3.29 pounds, and uh, that works. I mean, that's what you want. And I'm fixing to uh, cover that with aluminum foil, just tint it, and then we're going to get those vegetables in. As a matter of fact, I'll do that right now. I'm just going to put this like that. Just put a light tint on it, and then we'll look at this. And here is our broth, and I may not be able to do this with my tripod, but you can see we got a good bit of liquid. <clears throat> Maybe you'd want to take some of that out. We're not going to tonight because I just don't see the need in it. But I'm going to kind of easily drop these potatoes in. And the carrots, of course. And here's where the timing and all has came down. Now, I'm right at that max line, so I may have to dip some out. But I'm not over it yet, I don't think. But a lot of liquid evidently came out of that uh, roast. So we're going to go ahead and put these in, just like this. And yeah, I'm going to dip a little bit out with a coffee cup or something that, uh, that will uh, stand that heat. So I'm going, to shut this, um, I'm going to shut the camera off, and I'm going to grab something to uh, dip some of the liquid out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and took it down quite a bit because I don't, I don't care. I mean, I actually want the potatoes and carrots submerged, but I'll, leave, I'll show you what I had here. But, and this will be submerged somewhat, but I don't care if the cabbage is completely, you know, I don't want it completely submerged because I think it does better steam, you know, kind of a steaming situation. So right there is how it looks. And I'm about to put uh, a lid on and one of these days I'll have one of those cameras in the ceiling like everybody else has got and uh, uh, I'll be all high tech now but right now we're going to put this back on I'll show you where we are in fact again you don't have to lock the vent on this it locks automatically when you close it it is a very neat device we're going to pressure cook on high and well, first thing you gotta do is I, I'll, I don't know if you have to do this, but this is how I do it. I turn it all the way off, and then I hit pressure cook, and then I take my time. I want to move this all the way down to five minutes, and that seems to be perfect for the potatoes, the cabbage, and everything. Now, if 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 you wanted it a little less than that, just use a little smaller potatoes. But you saw what size I was using, and this seems to be exactly what we want. But there we go. We're off and running. Uh, as soon as the pin comes up, again, we're at, right now, it's 1050. So you can get an idea of how long everything's taken. And uh, that is that is with us doing the, uh, the, the natural release with this quick cool, where you could have just drunk, dumped that pressure and, and saved 25 minutes, I'm sure. But 
I kind of wanted to explain a little bit about what I said about uh, if you wanted to uh, reduce the time on, say, what the cabbage, if you like yours a little less done. Well, here's the size potatoes I'm using. And then if you look, these are even smaller. And, uh, you, you know, the smaller the potato, the shorter the time you need to put on pressure cook. In other words, I, uh, I got this set to five. These, prob these are probably good in, in three, or, or this size, probably good in three minutes, you know. I don't know if that's focusing, but yeah, those are probably good in three minutes where the ones we're doing are more like five. And that, that's really, well, well, with all cooking, you know, it's, it just reduces the time a little bit on the size. But just look at the size of the potato. That The ones we're cooking are, are golf ball, maybe a little bigger, where these are a little smaller than ping pong. So <laughs> anyhow, we're off and cooking here. The pan's already up. And we're about to uh, pull this out, and I'm going to slice up the uh, the corned beef. Be back. All right, there it goes. That is uh, the end of the five minutes. And I'm going to show you right here how you do this part right here. You can see the, the lever. I showed it while I go, but you don't have to worry about your hand. So that means that... Our brisket has been resting for about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm fixing to put it right here and uh, uh, get this sliced up. As a matter of fact, let's just move it there now. And there's how it looks. I'm going to move the camera a little bit more. As a matter of fact, we'll just set it like this. Go a little closer with the zoom. And then we'll take a couple of cuts right now because I'm going to slice it here and then I just want you to see it and it, it looks excellent and I'm sure it is. Now let's just see right here because I'm fixing to set it on. The, I'm going to get it set up on a plate with those vegetables, with everything we got there. But there it is. And uh, I don't think you'll get any tenderer than that. And it is fantastic so I'm about to uh, remove that liner with those handles as soon as that pin drops and I'm gonna take the whole liner out and set it right here where it can kind of stop cooking and then I'm gonna get my uh, uh, the, the plate that I'm gonna put everything on I'm gonna get all that set up and I'll be back and show you all what it looks like Okay, so the pin has dropped. I'm going to open the lid, and it looks excellent. <laughs> Set this in the sink, and here's what I mean by the handles on the pot, which are very ha handy. Now, it doesn't like it when you do that. It tells you there's something wrong, but we'll just hit cancel. And now, I will... Uh, get those out of there and transfer them to here along with that so be back okay i will show what i mean by how it stays together when you leave the uh the root in on and not remove that core and uh it just works for it it just works better i'll put it like that and uh there's what the vegetables look like and I am just kind of loosely placing these on here because <laughs> I'm not really sure how I'm going to display it. But if you think about it, if you had four people eating, you'd want to, you know, make it something similar to this. And then uh, out come the potatoes. But I got to think about how I'm going to display that, uh, that roast, which is going to be right here. So I'm going to do that. I'll be back. Okay, there, there it is. Uh, if you ask me, it's corned beef and cabbage uh, perfection. And I really think if you try it in an Instant Pot or in, no, any pressure cooker, you'll see what I mean. Uh, you can do so many things and change them so easy uh, by, well, you can see right here, there's just some cabbage <laughs> that's cooked. If you ask me and most people here, perfect. And it is, it still has a little bit of texture. Uh, the potatoes, they still have pop when you bite through the skin. The carrots, 
are not completely mushy, but the corned beef cut with a fork, and I'm not going to fill my mouth up like I do too often and all the time. It's not only really tender, but really good. <laughs> it really is. And uh, if you never pressure cooked corned beef before, hey, try it. I think you're going to like it. Oh, let me show you this. Uh, I don't know who this is, and he don't know who I am. But if you want the history of corned beef and tells you about how it's called corned beef and why a, a piece of salt the size of corn is why they how it got the name, but it's the history of corned beef at kitchenproject.com. Now, I don't know who he is, and he doesn't know who I am. I just found his website, you know, looking up when I was researching. Anyhow, hey, I love y'all all. If you can, hit me with one of these thumbs up, and I would be happy. <laughs> but anyhow, y'all come back to see me. Try this. See what you think. Uh, let me know. I love y'all. Bye-bye.